So in January, we had a meeting where we got together and we brainstormed over the kinds of programs and kinds of things we'd like to learn more about, issues, uh, things that are going on, but and, and subjects that we're just curious about as well. And one of the items that came up several times from people in the group was um, that they wanted to learn more about how local government works. Um, so Sarah and I reached out to uh, members of Highland Township and Milford Township government, and these five individuals were nice enough to accept our invitation, and we do appreciate it. Um, they're here really to give us a civics lesson of sorts tonight. Um, so I think we can all use that. <laughs> I know I can. Um, and for those of you that do have questions specifically about issues in the townships, um, if you would, um, let's stick to really how government works tonight rather than addressing specific issues tonight. Um, as you came in, there's a sheet of paper with all the contact information on when the office hours are at each of our township offices um, and the contact information and the website is really the way to go. Um, and because every single meeting, oh my gosh, I'll tell you one thing about working on this. When I went to the websites, I cannot believe how many meetings go on <laughs> and how many different um, groups there are working and um, our small towns. I mean, it's amazing how many people are involved. So that's where you need to go to really find out. But it's all on a piece of paper there. You can stick it up on your refrigerator. And that, that will be where you can uh, contact them on any questions that you might have that are specific. So it's my pleasure to turn over the meeting to our two newest members of our program team, Sally Dishaw and Dawn Collins. And so they'll be taking over right now. Yes, good evening. Thank you for coming tonight. And uh, as Sherry said, welcome to Local Government 101. All right, we're going to learn all about this. So um, first thing I'm just going to ask you, uh, could each of you please introduce yourselves and describe what your specific job in the township uh, really entails? Thank you. Uh, I'm Rick Hamill. I'm Highland Township Supervisor. Uh, I've been supervisor of 11 and a half, no, 11 and a half. I retired once in uh, 2006 and then somehow got myself engaged in, uh, I try not to call it politics because just got engaged in uh, being active in the community by running for township office. I have a lot of skill sets that I think are very well adapted to the job. My job is uh, to be responsible for overseeing the activities that occur in the community. Um, basically, general manager, uh, if you want to put it that way, supervisor is a good term. Um, I'm just one member of seven on a board, um, so a lot of people believe that I can do just about anything, but all I can do is to make sure I work within the confines of the uh, board setup, which is seven other people have, or six other people have more power than I do. A lot of people believe that the supervisor can willy-nilly just accomplish things and say, they go to them and say, I want to have this happen. It doesn't work that way. Uh, we do have state rules and regulations that uh, we do have to follow. There's an act that uh, pretty much defines what the supervisor's job is. It is 24-7. It is full-time. And uh, I have to say that uh, I never would have believed that I could enjoy something like this, but it's so different than any other job that it's got me running for another term. So um, I can't believe I would end up potentially having 16 years doing it. So I really enjoy it. Um, I have a super team that I work with, Tammy being one of them. I mean, super team. Uh, we meet once a month with uh, 15 to 20 other Oakland County supervisors. And I think I have the best team of any of those 20 communities. I mean, they're always saying, well, the so-and-so did this and so and so. My common answer is sucks to be you because <laughs> I've got a great team. So uh, um, 
I'll pass it on now to Tammy, and uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak tonight. Hi, thanks for having us. I'm Tammy Flowers. I'm the township clerk for Highland, and I've been there. I got elected in 2016, and um, I'll share sort of the description of Holly. I don't want to say everything, but we kind of have a split role. Of course, you know, we run the elections, and um, in Michigan, that's a unique kind of set up. There's not very many other places that do it the way we do, where townships are run or the elections are run locally by the townships or city clerks. And uh, there's, I don't know, 1500 of us around the state. And it's a big job. When I go to conferences, I talk to people from other states and they're like, well, I work for the county and I do just this one little piece of the elections. And uh, I'm like, well, we do everything from A to Z. And um, it's, it's an interesting perspective. It's, it's super challenging, super interesting, and it's always changing. Um, but I do want to say, if any of you aren't working elections, I need help in Iowa. So come here and hit me up. Probably you know a lot about elections, but you, maybe not all the stuff that we do in the background. Um, all the absentee work in the office and all the setting up of the organizing the teams and training the workers and setting up the precincts and dealing with all that background stuff is, is a big part of it too. So I'll let Holly talk about the rest of it. Oh, hello. Thank you for ha having us and thank you for coming. I'm Holly Brandt. I wanted to start by saying that I grew up in Milford Township and I've lived here most of my life. Spent a few years in Highland with my first husband. Um, I was hired in 2000 as the deputy clerk, and I became clerk in 2010, and have been here ever since. Well, there's elections is one aspect of our position, and we could go on and on since we're in the midst of four elections this year. Actually, we were barely done with the February election, and we had to clear your office. And to start working on the May election, and we're already working on August stuff, and November is still a little bit away yet. But um, I wanted to let you know that in Milford, my department handles many aspects that people don't know about. Everybody says, what does the clerk do? Well, in Milford, the clerk manages the town, I had to write it out. <laughs> Um, the, the clerk manages the financial activities, the general ledger, accounts payable, payroll, HR for all the employees, administering elections, cemeteries. We have two cemeteries in Milford Township, and I manage and maintain both of those and uh, record the burials and keep those kinds of records. FOIA requests, records management, we're the official records keepers for the township, both of us. And I'm sure that we share a lot of this too, right, Tammy? We do the agendas and minutes and look over other people's agendas and minutes. We manage the contracts and agreements for the township. And in my in my office, I do a lot of the interviewing and hiring of staff. We don't have a big turnover, but when we do, that I take on that task. My, my department manages the office equipment, and maintains it order supplies. My office maintains the web, our township website. It's brand new, by the way, so go check it out. I'm not even familiar with it. We just rolled it out about three weeks ago, the new version. My office also manages the concerts and the parks and rec events. I think that's about it. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, I try to keep a list, but it's fun and it keeps me busy, so. My name is Dale Wilkin, Township Trustee for the Charter Township of Milford. Got elected in 2000, November. Officially took office January 1st, 2001. I served six terms, which spans 24 years. Uh, prior to serving on the Township Board, I was a firefighter for the Township and interacted with every community around the area instructor for the state of Michigan. So I thought a lot of the firefighters are actually getting ready to retire now were ones that I taught when they were first learning to become firefighters. So 
I'm proud to see him grow up and uh, decide to call it quits. And we, I still do work with uh, some departments on specialized training on communications and everything as well. So, so I retired in my business and we have to watch over our office staff. We're, uh, our main job in the township is being the fiduciaries of the money. That's our most important job. Make sure we know where the money is, where it's being spent, if it's the right amount. And if it's not, then we don't hesitate to make corrections. That's right. It's my department that pays the bills, so they're watching over it. My name is uh, George Maker. I've been um, I've been in Milford Township for 27 years, and the wife and I have been supporting Vans in the Park for the last 10. Uh, I had a 36 year six year career at Ford Motor Company Product Development. I am currently the vice chair of the Milford Township Planning Commission. Uh, I've been on the Planning Commission since 2018. The Planning Commission is made up of nine members or appointed members, elected members, and hired members. We serve at the pleasure of the board and in uh, service to the community as a whole. An example of an appointed member would be the commission. They're appointed by the board. Uh, hired members would be our planning consultant, and the elected members would be a representative from the township board. And we also have a representative from the ZBA. It's important to know that the Planning Commission is a recommending body. We don't make decisions about what happens. We sort through all of the ordinances, establish finding effect, and make a recommendation to affirm or deny whatever's in front of us. We work in conjunction with the board, ZBA, and the Land Sport Board. We work toward the highest and best use of specific parcels of land, but again, within the construct of the township ordinances and finding the fact. Uh, at common boundaries between us and surrounding communities, we consult our neighbors and work with them. And I would encourage all of you to attend township board meetings, or to follow the township meetings. It'll give you a better understanding and a sense of what it takes to understand and nurture communities. George gave me a wonderful lead into the next question with common boundaries. We're addressing this to the folks from Milford. We have an interest in understanding how the Milford, the Charter Township of Milford and the Village of Milford work together as two separate entities. What operations fall to them separately? Are there any that are you share? And the three of you can sort out among yourselves how you want to answer that, please. I'll start. Thank you. Um, before we go, though, I forgot another job I do for the township. I'm the township board liaison to the zoning board of appeals. So, another one of my tasks. We're sort of fortunate in Milford here because we have a fantastic village in the center. And the village residents do pay a township tax. But we have always tried to drive the more intensive growth into the village to allow the village to thrive, grow, and the merchants in town to make money. We work together on stuff whenever we can. Some of the stuff is the concerts in the park. Parks and recs, we work together. We are parks and rec to a certain degree. Uh, we just made a contribution to the Billy DDA to rehab Central Park, which was a million and a half uh, that the township donated to the village. I was going to say that many don't realize that Millbury Township and Millbury Village are two separate units of government, but they are. And then Dale said, if you live in the village, you live in the township and also the village, which is why you get that special third tax bill every year. <laughs> so township residents do not pay village taxes. They do not live in the village. And I think we all know by now, but many don't, that there is no city of Millbury. We get those calls almost every day. People wanting to talk to the city of Millbury and don't know if they want a village or the township. So um, 
I grew up in Millbury Township, but now I live in the village, actually just a couple blocks away, like Frank does. Um, in the village, you have water. It's for those village residents that we have. You have water, sewer, police service. Well, we have police service in the township as well, but street lighting, street maintenance, those kinds of things. You know, the village has done a lot of road work. Uh, some in street, commerce street, the last couple of years, those are paid for by village residents, even though everybody drives down them. The township, the township provides is is a I don't want to offend anyone, but it's um it's a form of government like a city. It's a higher form of government than a village is in that the township does the assessing property evaluations, we administer the elections where villages do not do assessing or administer elections. The township provides the fire department services for both entities and the village provides police service for both entities. Oh. Village and township each have their own zoning ordinances and plan their community, communities like Dale said separately, but we also work together like Dale said to create a concentric zoning where the more dense and business like neighborhoods and business like is in the village, but the uh, township has got larger lot properties and it's more rural in nature, more countrified than in the village. So our our zoning is got uh, acre and a half lots, three acre lots, um, and some smaller lots within the village, so that they can't be divided and become the village because we just our zoning doesn't allow that. One other thing I was going to add is that interestingly, one about one third of Milford Township is taken up by the land mass taken up by parkland, whether it's Kensington Metro Park, Proud Lake Metro Park, Proud Lake State Rec area, Camp Dearborn. So but we don't own any parks. The village owns all the parks that our residents can use. So even though the township has all this parkland, None of it belongs to us, it belongs to other entities and groups. But all are welcome to use the village parks. I think that's about all I have. Do you have anything to add, Bill? Yeah, just one. One of the other things that uh, I, I do uh, with the township and the village is the tax board review where people come in they feel as though their tax is actually not good. And we look at those appeals and make decisions on those. But we do that for both the village and the township. Well, great. Thank you. Um, this also segues into the next question here is, uh, and this is for for both groups, um, for both Highland and for Milford. It's how do you interact with each other? And then to go the step further than how do you interact with the county or is there someone in between that we missed the interaction is any, any time that you do something with another community is called an inter, you end up having some type of a paper agreement so it'd be called an intergovernmental agreement many of you are probably aware of the transportation program um, at one time highland milford and the village were had an intergovernmental agreement where the three of us ran a program together. Things have changed completely on that one. Now it's a county wide village that uh, now manages, we manage a program called WOTA, which is stationed in Highland, but uh, it's no longer a Highland Township uh, black, you know, financed uh, operation or a village financed operation. So that was one way that we worked together. As a general rule, there's probably not a whole lot of interplay because you can run into movie situations where, you know, it, like you guys have a sewer, it'd be nice we don't have a sewer, it'd be nice to be able to get involved that way, but uh, that's stuff you just have to work out over time. And um, one of the ways that could happen is, um, you'd have to like hook up with either Commerce Township or if Milford had adequate uh, space in their system, we could work in an agreement that way. So, but we can't put a sewer system in our community that has a depository in Highland Township. 
uh, Eagle, which is the uh, used to be the DEQ, has made some really restrictive guidelines that uh, have kind of put that out. So uh, Commerce Township has a, the best facility, actually. So that would be interactive with Commerce because they own that plant. It's actually managed by Oakland County. Currently, not anything that we're really doing together, uh, but the door is always open to. Like I said, I need the Don uh, Green, Wilford um, Township Supervisor, once a month and, uh, with a group of them. And as supervisors, we do communicate with each other to talk what, what's going on in your community, uh, which segues to the upper end. So you got the township level, you got the village level, the village kind of falls with the township. Then you have the county and then the state. So Right now, the interaction is, um, you know, one of them is the uh, village that was voted for for the transportation. I don't know what Milford's actual vote was, but Highland voted against it. But there was enough votes to make it, you know, the, the overall population voted against it. But there was enough people that voted in favor to make it a countywide village. So, consequently, we now you have to deal with the county on that level. So that means your tax dollars for to go to the county are now 0.95 mills higher to, to run a bus program. Um, so other things that happen with the county is there's a lot of programs the county runs that uh, you know can be beneficial to, the, to our community as a whole or each community. There are grant programs. There's um, unfortunately there's a political scenario that occurs that I think it's in a way it's stuff. Um, but it doesn't affect me personally because I don't look at uh, the politics as a basis for communicating with people. So uh, I don't care who's managing the county. It's whoever's in charge is the ones you have to deal with. And there's no sense being a jerk about. How you deal with people. So, uh, uh, to me, there's no party involved as far as I'm concerned. But so we do interact with the county on a very regular basis. Uh, our assessing has to be uh, just finalized through um, Oakland County's equalization program. Uh, so, we have software that's interconnected with the county uh, planning and zoning. Uh, use a software called PSNA, which is actually managed by Oakland County to uh, track any building permits and, and property exchanges and all that. So there is a lot of interactive um, components uh, and you really can't do without the full circle. Um, they can't come in, you know, we, we can't make the county do anything, the county can't make us do anything, but the point is, is work together to make sure that you you get the best bang for the buck. So I think the number is probably about 56% of your property taxes go to the county. So uh, the remainder of it is localized either through school system or the local government's village, which is generally the smallest portion of it. The sliver thing. Okay. Yeah. I went down to on 0.6 mills. In reality, it does not. We're in 0.6 mills because that's only about 600 miles an hour. We couldn't operate on that. That's a half of our payroll. So when somebody comes to us, do you pay your? No, <laughs> uh, it doesn't quite happen to have it. So there's a money that comes from the, the state. Uh, it's called uh, state revenue sharing. That is garnered by sales tax. Sales tax goes to the state. The state determines what your share is based on some mathematical voodoo. And it comes back to us, the state revenue sharing. And that's the majority of the money we get. I think it's probably a million, million five or somewhere in there. So that's the lion's share. And then there's other um, resources that we get money from cell towers, so on and so forth. So uh, interactive community to community, uh, I think the best way to put it is that we all have to appreciate our neighbor and make sure that we're not stepping on somebody else's toes. I do 
facetiously say that I write on the South Island. So um, that's how I'm not. <laughs> you know, once somebody says where did you live, and people usually you know, say uh, Highland was that near Milford, you know. So I kind of say, well, we live near South Island. <laughs> so it, 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 it works. But uh, anyways, um, I think that the uh, relationship I've always had with, with the township has been very positive. So I don't can't say that there's any anything recent that we would not want to come to know would be a part of the uh, activities that are here and all that uh, could express. And I think the, the important part, and I want to give kudos to uh, Milford and the township especially, is for years, their goal was to make sure that it stays a residential community as much as possible. The commercial stays in the village. And that's an asset. From the standpoint that in Highland, we don't have a core uh, business district. We actually have three there's Central Highland, there's East Highland, and there's West Highland. And well, we also have uh, a principle that we established, and that's called the Scenic Corridor. On M59, when you leave White Lake and head west, you will get state land, something built there. We uh, with 325 foot setback requirements along M59, which kind of shoots down commercial desire. And we have no desire to put any more commercial in. So we're looking to the future the same way the village of Milford and Township does, even though the, like they're by the freeway, things happen they probably didn't want to have happen, but um, trying to keep it. Rural. That's been uh, for as long as I've been in office and before we've had surveys that says keep our community rural. That's the same thing. And the only way you can do that is to establish guidelines that says we're going to make sure that if you have commercial, it's in an appropriate place. When you run out of space, it's done. That's all there is to it. You know? So um, we don't have sewers, which means that. Uh, Overdevelopment is um, not possible because the developers need sewer and, and uh, water to establish you know, multi uh, house developments. And uh, so that's where we're at with uh, working together. We do work with uh, Holly and uh, Willis Township um, to make sure that the uh, we share a share of occasion for those townships. So we don't have a police department paid for by, you know, within, in a house like the village does. We, we use the open kind of sheriff's patrol. So. Okay. Anything else? We yeah. I was just going to add the fire departments do mutual aid agreements with each other. So if uh, there's large events in, um, you know, neighboring communities, they can call for service and support from the other neighboring communities. And also, you know, uh, as clerk, I lean heavily on uh, the other clerks around me. We all are calling each other all the time to share information, brainstorm ideas, problem solve all the time. And I think that happens in the other departments to some extent as well. But I know the clerks too, extensively. That's pretty much does it for me as well. I have right on here. Right. Let me call you guys. Call Tammy's office. See what Don's doing. Right. See how they're handling this. Did they get this in court? Did they have waiting for that? It's especially with elections. That's what we've been talking a lot this year. I don't really have anything to add. Um, I think Rick he did a great job with the interactions with Golden County. They have agreements that they want us to join in with, and usually those kinds of things security type things and then they'll send up an adoption they want us to adopt uh, some sort of mandate that the county commissioners that they have to sign on board with I can't think of anything right now but that's about all that uh just one thing I know the cooperation between in the open case between village and township has been fantastic. We both have respect for each other. We know what our residents want, what we need, and we try and provide it if we can. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
working with other townships, we've never had a, any real major issues. There's sometimes, like you know, Rick said on the transportation issue, the program that they wanted everybody to go to at that particular moment in time did not suit the residents of Milford. So we had to do ultimately what's right for Milford. We're still using it our way. Um, we're independently utilizing people express. But, you know, I am constantly chit chatting with townships around us. You know, a lot of people in Brighton Township, you know, a lot of people down in Lyon Township, City of South Lyon, and over in Wixom. Because I live down. And I also, you know, trained a lot of their firefighters, as I said earlier. So I, I know the clerks, I know the supervisors. And I know a lot of the trustees. So it's, it's good if you have an issue, you can go down and mention it to them and say, you know, this is something that could benefit both of us because we share a road as a divider line. Center line down Pine Hill is the divider line between Wixom and Lyon Township or between Milford and Lyon Township. So, you know, one side of the road is controlled by the county. The other side of the road is controlled by Milford. So we just try and look out for each other. Next question, I'm going to go back to Rick and Tammy. Rick, I think you started to speak to this. Are there characteristics of government that are unique to Highland because of maybe geography, housing, roads, et cetera? Things that you run into that maybe Milford may not. Township to township basis, the rules are pretty much the same. I mean, um, the differential between um, Milford and Highland is that the village owns its own roads. That's a huge difference. Now, it's a cost to the village residents, but um, if something's wrong with the roads, you can go to Christian and say, we need this taken care of, and he can make that happen way faster than you can get to county. All the roads in Highland Township are either private or they're county owned, maintained, or MDOT, which would be like M59 or state highways. So in the townships, the things that are common is we share the county road commission garage, which is over on Duck Lake Road. Um, they do gravel programs. That's one of the programs that we uh, engage in. I'm pretty sure Milford does it too, uh, where you allocate your tri-party funds, which is you share with the county and, and federal government and uh, local government, and we pay to have the gravel done. So the county works um, in a pattern where they start in South Lyon and they move north up to their jurisdictions, and the irony is, is people always call two days before they show up in your community because that's how long it took for the roads to go to pieces. So it it makes you look, you know, you say, I'll, I'll take care of it. It makes you look like a Superman because they fix it the same day or the next day. Well, I have to admit it, we didn't have anything to do with it. It's just the, the pattern of uh, how we take care of the roads. Our governing bodies are pretty much the same uh, because we're a charter township and Milford's a charter township. You uh, have a, uh, if you're a general township, you have five board members. Uh, if you're a charter township, you have seven board members. There are some legal aspects that change when you become a charter township uh, on how you uh, interact with the state and uh, federal things, but it's, it's not. It's still a, a general board. Our challenge is, once again, very similar. Um, we have a huge amount of land in Highland Township. 28% of our township, which is 36 square miles, is park. It's state, it's county, and some of our own parks. And uh, we do have, um, basically, we'll have four parks one in each quadrant of the township if you break it up by the center point, which we manage. Uh, there's, uh, let's see what else would be maybe unique. I think, well, Milford has the freeway down there, or close, not quite. 
that's in line. So we do have uh, M59 running right through the middle of our township. That puts us in a relationship where we have to deal with the state on that all the time. Fortunately, we have a good relationship with MDOT, and um, let me work on M59. Every time I've come up with an idea, they okay, and they do it. So uh, they helped us put in a four-mile-long uh, path along M59. So um, other than that, there's not a lot of unusual. Um, I feel like the main difference would be like the style of or the makeup of the community so uh some townships have a much larger tax base some have are more rural and just more neighborhoods and so it makes a big difference in what you the kind of things that you can do um some of us run our own fire department some of us run our own police departments so that kind of affects the kind of issues that you're dealing with at the board um but you know, I mean, a township can be anything from like Waterford or Canton, which are huge townships, they're not cities, and all the way down to like Rose Township, just to the north of us, where, and they're a general law where they barely have 2,000 residences. And um, it's just a kind of a different thing. But there's a lot of similarities between Highland and Milford for a lot, but um, you will find differences. I want to add, kind of add to that because this is something that a lot of people don't understand. It, that's a really good point, is that we have a population of just a few under 20,000. Um, there's counties all over the United States, counties that don't have that many people. In. And I think you guys are probably around 10,000 for the township or somewhere in there, 9, 9 10. Or both. both, yeah. So it's it's almost the same uh, in terms of numbers. Well, when you take like Rose Township and you talk about fire, they had they share fire, a millage to them in order to cover the cost that they have to have. What we can do for 1.5 mills, they, they could be 4.5 mills or six mills, and. That's huge. That's huge money. And it's for the same kind of service. So those are things that are kind of unique to the, the community based on size. So uh, the bigger the community you have, the, you know, the village can be smaller, but generates a lot more revenue. So um, that's what really makes it hard for the, the smaller communities, especially in the county, to be able to uh, manage their their day-to-day -day duties, because all they can do is charge million and get state revenue sharing to cover their costs. The cost is still the same. It's just the number of people that have to pay for it is different. And so that's why. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. That makes a lot of sense. All right. My next question is for the clerks. Are you guys ready for this one? All right. Yeah. <laughs> what I, you you guys can arm wrestle to see who uh, answers first. What's your assessment of the first two sessions of early voting? From a clerk's point of view, what is on your wish list for the next election? Well, I said I can go first. Milford has only participated in the one early voting, which was just a couple of weeks ago. I don't even know how long ago it was. Now I'm on the May. Um, we did not have a November. Uh, no. So same for both of us. It was our first election with early voting. Milford Township is partnered with not Beltline, but Lyon Township. And our voting site is site that county voting site is site number seven at the Lyon Township office. So everything went pretty good there. The county has assigned each of us each voting site, and there are 19 of them in the county that the county has established. A person from the county clerk's um, elections division to manage that site. Our site was um, Heather, she's kind of the head of Oakland County Elections under the director. And we worked with Lyon Township, the Lyon Township clerk, Michelle Cash, and her deputy, and they had staff some, a couple of you worked. I know um, Sherry worked and Liz worked. 
don't know who else worked, but feel free to sign up because in May, uh, Milford is the only one having an election, and I was hoping that we would have some Lion Town um, Milford Township representation at the Lion Township Site 7 precinct. So I think Oakland County did an excellent job rolling this out. A lot of counties within the state, I think there are only a couple of counties in the state of Michigan that are handling early voting for their their clerks in the county. I think Oakland, Ottawa, maybe, or Kent, Oakland and Kent County is out by Grand Rapids. Those two I know for sure. I don't know who else is. Otherwise, the clerks of each city and township are on their own trying to work the nine days of early voting into the other business at hand those nine days before election day. So I guess I feel that we're blessed because the county has taken us on, purchased the equipment, hired and trained the staff, and we're there to, well, in my case, unlock the doors in the morning, meet with the workers. I didn't get to see you because I wasn't on your day. You met Natalie and Wendy, my staff. Lock up at night, check on them during the day, be a resource for them, as well as the county provided person. But everything went really smooth. I can't remember. I'm sure our numbers were about the same. We had 300 and then I think we had just about that as well. And I think we broke 400. But I was looking forward to hoping that more voters take advantage of it once people understand it, once the media understands it. I think it's a great opportunity. I I went and early voted because you know it's 8 30 when the polls open and they don't have any customers. Well, I'm here, I'll I'll vote. <laughs> so I, I did it that way myself. One thing I wanted to say, and Tammy can probably agree, that it was difficult for my department. I have three and a half people in my department, plus myself, well, including myself for elections, three and a half staff that work on elections on a daily basis. And it was difficult to take care of the things we needed to take care of the nine days before election day. Plus, those days were long because, in my case, I would unlock the, the Lion Township office at 7.30 in the morning, wait for their the early voting staff to get everything up and running, and then we would leave about 8.30, come to our regular job for the day, or if it's Sunday, you know, we came into work, or we went back home, or we're on call. But we have a lot of things we're managing, maybe you want to... Touch on that. Go ahead. I was just going to say, my first wish is to clone myself. <laughs> and uh, it was just, <laughs> yeah, it, it, was a, it was a lot of work. Um, and, you know, if I hadn't had this job, then I would be like, yeah, that's great to have all that extra time to be able to vote. Um, it's, we'll see how well it's adapted before the end of the year. And my hope is that November, it'll get, you know, more busy. We, we were excited when a voter showed up because it was pretty slow in there. It's uh, some days worse than others, but um, it's a we, 30 to 40 voters a day, sometimes less. Sometimes less. We had a day with like 14 voters. So uh, my other second wish is voter education. Um, People really aren't grasping it or aware of it yet. So we had mailed out postcards to every voter and um, it was real slow. So uh, I tried to go out and talk to people about it. And one thing that we saw was, you know, as we got towards the end of early voting, the, the numbers started picking up. People tend to think about elections at the last minute. And, um, so in fact, you know, early voting ended at Sunday. And in Highland, we have the voting uh, site is in our auditorium right there. So, and we serve Highland and White Lake. And so Monday, when we're doing our final day preparations, there wasn't an early voting site open on that day, but lots of people were coming in. I'm here to vote. And they had their little blue card with them. 
this is my my voting site. I'm like, oh, it's your early voting site and you're late. <laughs> so, uh, and then Tuesday, the same thing. People were coming in, even people from White Lake were coming to Highlands, Township Office. And I'm like, no, it's election day. And the election day, you vote at your precincts. Early voting, you vote at the early voting site. So that's a message we really needed drill in people's head. I don't think that happened that much in I and Lyon. Yeah. Well, there were several. So, uh, you know, and again, it wasn't a really, it was a low turnout election anyways. So it was a good warm up. But, um, you know, there were some pickups with dealing with some support from the state because Proposal 2 was exceedingly uh, it was it was a lot. It was a lot to try to accomplish in one year, and it really they didn't even get a full year because the legislators had to enact it, and they took they were well into the summer before they got the enacted legislation. They added a couple more things, and then the state bureau had to, you know, put the things in place that we need to work, and that came software. I guess there are other works in software. Right. There's still things we're waiting on, but uh, you know the challenges were big and it it was tough. But um, if I could wish that you know we had a longer time to enact things, that would be nice. But uh, it is what it is. Well said. <laughs> what kinds of things are keeping you guys up at night? What are you worried about in terms of? You know your work with the with the townships. Well, the kinds of things that you know you're trying to do the best you can for your community. A lot of times you're working on and trying to represent and recommend unpopular positions to their individuals, you know, businesses or large corporations, and staying the course and being fair, legal, consistent. And cathartic is a really fine line. And uh, I spend a lot of time thinking about how how to have a good So it's, it's important because we are there to serve the communities, all businesses, corporations, all of us. So. There's so many things I could think of as keeping me awake at night. <laughs> But number one issue is safety and security of our residents. We want to make sure that if there's an incident like which happened out in Clinton Township, and we don't fall big fire with the exploding cans and stuff, that we have the capabilities to manage a situation like that, keep our residents and our firefighters and police officers all safe. We're lucky in Milford because our fire departments and our police departments work hand in hand. They do training together hand in hand. We just sent uh, one of our firefighters and one of our police officers out to San Diego for large event planning and drills and if there's something that ever goes wrong. So we constantly look at what we can improve in Milford. And the other issue, of course, is taxes. Keep our tax base down as low as we can, but provide you the best service we can. That's really important. Well, my response is that in two or three words, what keeps you up at night? My three words are all of it. <laughs> all of it. Everything about my job has kept me up at some point or another, honestly. Managing, the, like George said, managing the township, making decisions that affect a few or many or everyone is a big deal and like Rick has said we are politicians we're right here grocery shopping with you being at the gas station with you doing things in the community and we're accessible to you we're not politicians that you have to send an email to or make a phone call to and hope you get a response in fact you can walk in to our offices and and just talk you know unless we are in the moment that we can't talk, you know, we can make an appointment with us, come in, stop in, say hi, or whatever. We're right here. And 
I just wanted to say that I uh, send myself emails in the night if I do these things. They keep me up at night so that I can I send myself an email, my work email on my phone that's next to my bed so that I remember to take care of this or did I check that or I have to call this person. So um, I think sometimes, uh, I mean, like she said, it's everything. And if you, every day is something different. You never know what it's going to be. Um, sometimes I think dealing with employee issues can be kind of a, a challenge because, you know, we all are trying to, um, I think of myself as a, an official, as I'm there to, to take care of the employees as they take care of the residents. And, um, it's a constant challenge. There's always changes, and um, you want to make sure that you're doing the best for them so that they could do the best for you guys. And um, I think that's probably at the top of the list, but again, there's the list is very long. Um, but and then you always think of, like, like has been mentioned, you know, to have some kind of an emergency in the township or things like that. You want to be as prepared as you can be. Um, things happen. Even like Oxford, you think about something like that. That would be, that would change our lives, you know, something like that. So um, all you can do is do your best every day to try to take a step forward to improve things and, and try to be ready as you can. I just increased the amount of melatonin. <laughs> <laughs> um, I could say all the above, but I happen to be a, overachiever uh, in a grand way, and Tammy can verify that. <laughs> and so I tend to get projects stacked up that are highly dependent on myself, and I am personally involved in most of them. And those keep me up at night trying to figure out solutions to them and, you know, how can I speed it up? And, you know, is it going to rain tomorrow? Is it going to ruin this? You know, those kinds of things. But I spent my first career as a um, landscaper and I had owned a nursery in Highland where our library is and so I spent my first career every night I problem solved so when I lay down in bed I was problem solved so this job is virtually the same kind of thing um, I work all the stuff I can do during the day and then at the end of the day what's left are the problems that need to be solved I lay down come up with a plan of some sort, which never works, but uh, at least you have a plan when you get up. And uh, so I don't really lose sleep over the job. It's just another extension of the problem solving. But I try not to dwell on disaster. Uh, we have our sheriff's department, our fire department, all extremely well trained to be put in that shoe. Now, I... I know what I need to do to interact with them. And we also have county teams that are, you know, the same way. So I tend not to be, um, I don't freak out about that so much because I think that um, the other reason is I used to be an EMT a number of years ago. And when something serious happens, there's an autopilot that kicks in and tells you what you need. And that's the kind of stuff in emergencies, like, you know, like going to, autopilot. Yeah, so I don't lose sleep over those things, but I, I do my problem solving at night. So if you want to call that losing sleep, I don't sleep very much, <laughs> but it works. And it's been the way I spent my entire life. And I seem to get up every morning and ready to roll and, um, and I have a, I mean, a pretty good feeling about this. Okay. Okay. So uh, um, I think that uh, I have to give kudos to our entire team. I mean, uh, in the office, they're all concerned. Uh, I'm one of just a couple of guys in the office, so it's mostly our, our people, my female cohorts that uh, are always thinking about these things. You know, they're they're concerned about someone coming in, and you know, so we're doing training and stuff. You know, we're doing some training for that active shooter things and stuff you don't want to hear about. But um, we have a team that's very serious about 
also being engaged. So that's a, it takes that load off of my head of worrying whether they're going to be prepared or not. So uh, I'm not trying to sound braggadocious, but I don't really lose a lot of sleep over the so, Thank you. I think that really put a human face on what it takes to govern our township. So thank you. I'll turn it over to Sally. Oh. This will just be an easy one um, because we invited you here and learned so much about what you do and how you interact um, and how you offered um, that if we do have questions, uh, we're wondering as members of the community, uh, what's the best way, what form of communication? I mean, do you want us to phone? How many want phone calls? Who wants emails? Who wants texts? You know, what's what's the best way to uh, for the community to contact you? I don't know how you guys feel about the Milford Times, but when I look at the Milford Times, there's never anything about Milford. It's always about some other community. We lost the spinal cow. Yeah. That's our paper. Yeah. And when I first... Um, got into office, the spinal column has sold, and I met the individual that bought it, and he ran it for a little while, and then he was going to close it down, and I talked him into keeping it going. And he did it for a number of years, and it, it was a, you know, a lot of people say, oh, we don't read the papers. Ah, baloney. That paper was read. Was, I mean, as soon as it went away, what happened to the spinal column? So, consequently, it's been very difficult to find an avenue to meet each group of people. If you're on Facebook, you've got friends and you got friends, but you don't know each other, blah, blah, blah. And it's just very hard to disseminate information. So we made a decision this year as a board. We are producing a, we're going to do two copies of it, a magazine for Highland Township. That is going to be the tool to replace the newspaper that will go to everybody's mailbox. And it'll have information about every part of our government, uh, business um, groups. Um, it, and we're excited about that coming out. So that's going to be a tool that will help the public understand what we do and also how to communicate back with us. So that's the tool that's going to identify the, the uh the way we need to be communicated with. Well, I, I really don't care how to get a hold of me, you know, text or email or whatever. I think that just the ability for people to be able to do that to us, you know, to send it to us individually is pretty key. That's the one thing that does work 100%. You know, <laughs> us trying to get out of the door is the hard part. So um, phone calls, I prefer phone calls because you can have one-on-one -on -one instantaneous um, texting's a little harder. I, I got fumbled fingers. I can never hit the, the right letters, and uh, there's always a delay. So, uh, but I stop me in the street, you know, at the restaurant, wherever you might see me. Uh, that's the way to, I think, the best tools. So, and um, you know, we're here to respond to all kinds of communications. Um, just don't call me on election day. <laughs> For a half hour conversation, <laughs> um, we get an, we got a lot of emails um, from residents on this issue or the other, and I think people just need to understand that uh, you know writing a paragraph in all capitals is not going to accomplish more than just you know. I mean, we're here, we're concerned about your issues too, and um, you know, <laughs> you don't have to yell at us. We're, we're we're ready to try to help you solve the problem if we can. I get a lot of people that stop in because we're right by the post office, the village, village residents stop in when they pay their water bill, or people walking. So just come in and say hi or call me at the office, um, email me at the office. It's on our website. You can stop me if you see me somewhere. Um, you're lucky enough to have my cell phone number. Please don't text me in the middle of the night because I'm busy emailing myself. <laughs> Email or phone calls is the best way to get a hold of me. Um, generally, if you send an email, it's going to be followed up by a phone call. So um, just give everybody, I think, courtesy of 
unless it's a dire emergency, then you should, probably shouldn't be calling me or somebody else in town should call 911. But um, general concerns or something, give us, you know, until the next business day to get back to you. If you don't hear something after one business day, give us a call back. We all get busy and it slips our minds. I'll make the same the same invitation. Come to the meetings. Come and come and join us. See how we see how the things we we struggle with and that we grapple with on your behalf. And we do it um, because we and we love each other. Just about it. Yeah. Hopefully, Mary will come to our township board meeting next week, like she does quite often, because I want to see the progress she's making on whatever it is she's making. <laughs> I want to say that if you really want to know what's going on in the community, go to the meetings and you'll really know. I'd like to thank you and I'd like to open it up to questions from the audience. Um, cross township meetings with other with other townships for planning to make sure that if you're say the new site out by 96 is coordinated with something else in Lyon Township or farther on in Milford. There's a, a lot of things that we do uh, with our neighboring uh, communities. Uh, commerce, Wixom, uh, Brighton, uh, Highland. And the reason is, and it, it's usually Right at the border. I mean, what's happening inside the building really doesn't have much of an effect on um, outside. Um, but if there's something that we're changing and something that's going to affect the surrounding communities, we'll, we'll definitely get in touch. And the other communities do the same with us. They'll send us uh, a letter to the Planning Commission. Hey, we're looking at this, what do you think? That kind of stuff. And it's, we'll do what's best for the township. But we also take into consideration what our what our neighbors' uh, uh, positions are too. So you don't have. I guess my question was: Do you have a um, set meeting or a set a form, committee that meeting? No. normally representatives from no. that would discuss? No, we don't. Uh, there is a a, a uh, point where the planning commission ends up interacting with those surrounding communities. And that's when you do the master plan, which is every five, 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 whatever. Five. Then those surrounding communities actually have an opportunity to weigh in on. So uh, Milford Township, when they do their master plan, they would have an opportunity to weigh in on, uh, we would, uh, how we felt about what, what how it might affect us generally. There's no comments made, but the same thing with Highland. We're just about ready to finish ours up. So the Milford Township will have an opportunity to make a comments on it before it can be legally accepted as a master plan. You brought up the Clinton Township. And, and the one thing when I saw that, I thought, okay, do the townships have a, after they give out the, per, the permit for that uh, site, mm -hmm. And they said that they were specifically banned from having the whatever it was, the whippets and the uh, canisters. Is there a follow-up uh, from a from? Is there a structure in the township to have the permits followed up on for an inspection to see if the industrial site or does that go to OSHA? Well, what it, is that? OSHA gets involved when there's an accident. Yeah, it's um, kind of late, but but before the beforehand, in most cases, in pretty much every community in southern Michigan, the fire department does an annual inspection on the business properties. So they can walk in, they know what that business is licensed to have and what's not licensed to have. And if they're doing something that they shouldn't be, then that information is passed on to the township or police department or whatever. Jurisdiction needs to go through an enforcement. It could be the building department or the building inspector. So, our fire marshal in Milford works very closely with the building department. He looks at the site plans before he goes to our industrial and commercial properties. He knows what's supposed to be in there versus maybe. So, when he goes out there, he knows what isn't supposed to be in there because he knows what was a 
proved to be in there by reading the minutes and looking through the packet of plans and things. So we're small though, we only have one real big corridor of, of industrial, which is along Pontiac Trail. I, I can't even address how Clinton Township, how many fire marshals they have or inspectors, but our fire marshal does take care of these things in Milton Township. So there is a structure though. Yeah. 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 So it's not, I, I thought there was, I thought it was, I heard the news, that's the first thing I thought of. Was, ah. Well, the, the, one of the interesting things is, is there's a lot of businesses that you just take for granted, auto parts stores, we had uh, one burned down in Highland and Milford's fire truck got damaged by this shock absorber uh, that blew up in a window that was a sample and it flew out and missed me by about 25 feet and smashed into the, their fire truck while they were helping us with the fire. And then it was the same kind of things. Um, paint cans flying through the air or, you know, just there's so many things like that. Uh, Ace Hardware is full of things like that. So it's not just industrial. It, there's a lot of businesses that we just take for granted. And you go into a, a Ace or and look at how many cans of Rust-Oleum spray paint they have. Those all become bullets and bombs and you know rockets and everything else. So um, propane tanks that are sitting outside of uh, the gas station, uh, you know, for you to pick up on barbecue grills. So the fire department, our, our fire department, uh, generally when you have those products, there should be a map on hand of the items you have in your building so that the uh, fire department knows when they enter that building, what aisles they have to be looking out for, or what, you know, that, that type of thing. So that one in Clinton Township, I'm not, I don't know exactly what their, their business was, but I mean, they probably just had a lot of that product when it took off, it took off. So. Speaking of the master plan, I uh, live in Converse Township, so I went to those meetings about their master plan. And what I noticed is they had a consultant doing it. And um, yeah, there was public input, but, you know, I think it was disregarded. And I know that this consultant was doing other master plans for other townships. I was on a planning commission in suburban Philadelphia. We did our own master plan. So do you use a consultant or did you do your own? Well, the consultant is there to help guide the planning commission to do the job. You know, so our planning commissioners actually are the ones that are engaged in it. Uh, we've done surveys, the planning commission put the surveys out. We've had uh, public uh, meetings where uh, people came in and uh, gave their opinions on uh, different elements of the plan and ideas. So uh, it is, highly interactive in-house, but you still, you need a professional to put the plan together because there are elements that are required by law. So, uh, but a lot of communities just hire the consultant, they come in and put the pieces together and then the master plan goes, yes, yes, yes. So ours, ours is interactive. So this, this was better than uh, sitting in front of the TV and watching YouTube. <laughs> I appreciate, I really appreciate the opportunity to come to Milford and be a part of helping people understand. We, we really do. We really do appreciate that. And um, oh, we're so happy that we're better than YouTube today. <laughs> that might be the nicest thing anybody said about us. <laughs> no, we really appreciate it. You guys are, I learned a lot. I don't know about the rest of you, but I really did. I, I was... Uh, it really was good. I think by hearing what people do and all the inner workings, like I said, just cruising the websites are amazing to see how many people are involved in local government. And um, it helps us be better citizens, I think, the more you know. And well, you hit it on the nail when you talked about the need for education. Education is everything. And I mean it in the broadest sense of the word, you know, um, knowing what's going on. So thanks again. We're going to have a short business meeting. You're more than welcome to stay or, and I wouldn't blame you a bit if you want to leave because it could be pretty boring for you, but I just wanted to let you have that opportunity. Yeah. I just, I just want to say one more thing. Um, the clerks have had such an unbelievable responsibility in managing the way that we run our governments. 
And uh, I have to say that when this federal stuff has been going on and the accusations of impropriety and everything else, as Pam said, there are 1,500 clerks in the state of Michigan. Are we going to call all 1,500 of those liars? No. no. Yeah. So if you just look at it from that standpoint, Mr. You get more than one basket of cookies. We're going to give you the whole counter. <laughs> you the whole counter. Um, yeah, we, we have a great deal of appreciation for that work. I will say when I was at Lyon Township, to the person, everybody that came in, well, the people I worked with were wonderful, but to the person, every per voter that came in said, this is great. How come there aren't more people here? And so it's just a matter of time, I think, in working the bugs out, because once the word gets out, people are going to realize what a great thing, you know, it is. I know it's a lot of days, but, you know, it, it really, in its, um, the whole purpose, I think, will be, be good. And we do appreciate you.